What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sachin. I'm a coach and this channel is all about personal development and living a conscious lifestyle. Welcome back to another episode of what I learned this to, this week. It's normally this week. It's been about a couple of weeks since I posted an episode. Um, yeah, real shit. We're going to talk about me today. Um, I've had some very profound insights over the last couple of weeks and I want to address something before we continue. I was speaking to a friend yesterday and she said, Sachin, when I see you and other coaches out here, it looks like, you know, you guys have got it all figured out, your life's perfect and nothing goes wrong. You know, you're always talking about what you've learned and it's just, it's kind of discouraging. It makes me feel like shit because it makes me feel like, well, I'm not doing any of that. And I said to her, dude, you know, like the only reason I'm able to do this is because I make so many mistakes. I am I I get this from coaches quite a lot too. They're like, "Oh, Sachin, how do I have how come you have a successful coaching business?" And I'm like, "Dude, I've fucked up more times than you've even thought about trying." That's the only difference. So the reason I only the, the only reason I do this is because I keep making mistakes, getting things wrong, ma- owning those mistakes, doing the work to adjust my behavior, and then I move forward and then I make another mistake. And today I want to share a lot of my mistakes with you. Uh, that have happened over the last couple of weeks. Mistakes and misunderstandings, different flavors of both of those things. Um, the first the first thing I want to talk about is expectations. So I met someone a little while ago and, uh, you know, this was around the time I started learning about non-ownership, uh, not treating women as property, like my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my... And it really resonated with me. You know, this this felt like the software update that I really wanted, right? Because I've never got down with the idea that women should be yours or like your property or anything like that. And when I learned about these concepts of not owning women and just being in the presence of beauty and appreciating it and, you know, there's that saying, beauty needs a witness. Um, that's really what I was on board with. Then I met someone and it's like all that new programming went out the window and I went back to, from like Windows 2020 to Windows 98. <laughs> and, um, you know, the first like couple of, the first, yeah, month or so, like I was, I was getting it, you know, oh yeah, like I, I'm seeing how this applies. And then my expectations that I was loading my interactions with this person with, were weighing me down and it was starting to fuck up our interactions and you know we nothing we weren't in a relationship we weren't nothing was happening physically or anything like that just talking and I really I seen a lot of myself uh from from back then putting a lot of expectations on this even though I said I don't have expectations and this is the difference you know like you can learn new concepts but when there's like a delay between learning something, understanding it, and then applying it in your life, and you get tested. And this was a big test for me. You know, the, this test was all about, well, yeah, Sachin, you have this concept of known ownership. Can you apply it to a, a situation where you're being drawn to old behaviors and ideas of ownership? And it was really like, I'm only able to see this now looking back at it. This is like months later. And the last couple of weeks, I've been on a virtual retreat and it's all about uh, self-inquiry, you know, um, looking in at my own thinking, my own ideas of how I should be living life and things that I believe about myself or other people. And when I did this work, it really pointed the finger right back at me in a massive way. And it really showed me like such an you're a fucking idiot because you have been projecting a lot of your expectations onto this person. This is another thing I I saw as well is like one of my big uh, problems was I wasn't treating all women the same. So I don't have a problem with being friends with anyone Uh, unless you're not cool then then that's a different story. But if you're cool you're interesting you know we probably get on that's fine everyone can be my friend and when my expectations, which was my problem, were not met uh, in this interaction I was having, then I took friendship off the table. I was like, nope. And, and it's really like, that's not how I want to get down. I'm sharing this stuff with you because I want you to see, number one, I make mistakes all the fucking time. And number two, I like to own those mistakes so that I don't do it again. 
Because I don't want to treat people like that. Especially like, I love women. They're just like amazing creatures. To the, the world would be shit without women. There's this thing like the masculine makes it possible. The feminine makes it worthwhile. Nothing I do would be worthwhile if it wasn't for women on the planet. Like, real shit. Most of my clients are women. And it's like I'm in the presence of women so much. And there's so much to, to adore about them. And I don't want to treat any of them different. You know, um, this this self-inquiry I've been doing on myself the last three days really opened my eyes. Um, I started to see so much more beauty in everyone and in myself too. And this is one of the things I really like about myself is that I'm totally okay with sharing my mistakes and ugly things with the world. I don't, I don't give a shit. I don't think there's a problem with it. Um, and it's really helping me to like outgrow these old behaviors and, and update my software, if you will, you know, like, you know, if you ever go back, to, <laughs> if you go back to a Windows PC from like 1995 and you try and update it, it will say download or installing one of 20 million updates, right? And that's kind of what's happened for me over the last three days. I installed a bunch of updates. And it really shook me, you know, like, wow, is that how I've been behaving? Holy shit. And in the past, I've been very, as we all are, prone to beating myself up. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, my God. And and if I do that, it's going to take everything, all the emphasis off the person who I actually need to apologize to and correct the behavior. Right. It's going to be like, oh, I feel bad for me. And that's not really how I want to get down either. This whole experience has taught me a lot about understanding what, what what programming am I running on. You know, I had another big thing about tattoos, right? I was worried in at some point that, oh my God, you know, I shouldn't be getting them because it's an expression of illness. And you know where that's coming from? It's not about anyone else. It's me. When I was younger, I wanted to get lots of demonic dark shit all over my body to, to, to warn people off, you know, don't fuck with me. Yeah. yeah. And, and like... I, I want it's a, it was an outward expression of the fear and the illness I was experiencing in within. And I don't have that anymore. I, I'm not ill anymore. I haven't been ill for many years. So I don't need to operate on the old programming. This is really important for understanding like what what do you want out of life? When I saw what I want out of life, which is just to love all women the same, then I could look back at these behaviors and say, oh, well, those behaviors don't align and they're not congruent with the, the mission statement. So let's put a stop to them. And I'm, I'm more than happy to own where I go wrong. And really owning it means correcting the behavior, not just saying, yes, I was wrong and still like being the same way. I'm all about the ownership, <laughs> not when it comes to women, but when it comes to me, you know, owning my mistakes correcting them and going forward with a different attitude and a different way of being. And that's really the, the emphasis that I want to put on our conversation today. I'm sharing my stuff with you again so that you can see where I'm going outside in. You know, I thought, oh, um, this is another big realization I had is where I didn't know what I wanted. But when you don't know what you want, the default or default, however the hell you say it, becomes more. So with this person, you know, I, the, I didn't really know what I wanted. And so I just kept wanting more. And that's really what drives people away from you. You know, it's same with business. If you're not sure if you want someone to become your client, but you just quote unquote need the money, the default quickly becomes more and it pushes people away. But the reason I prosper in business and I have a lot of great friendships and relationships with women is because I generally don't expect anything genuinely like I'm okay with it but in this particular situation I defaulted back to old programming which is I want more I want more and it's the the general summary of it is if you like me if you approve of me if you become my client if I get money then I'll like me and if you're trying to seek you liking you through other people it's like saying okay I'm in England I want to drive to France but let's go to Scotland first like, why, why would you do that? <laughs> um, it's a real eye-opener for me, you know, and, and uh, 
yeah, there's a little bit of, oh, I'm scared. Like, what will people say? You know, Sachin, he's a coach. There's like 3% of that in the back of my head. But I love sharing this stuff with you. You know, um, it reminds you, hopefully, that I, I also am in the journey with you. I say it all the time. I'm not on the mountaintop shouting down from you. Fuck you, I made it. I'm really here with you. Like, I make a lot of the same mistakes as a lot of people, but just in different ways. And I see things, I've corrected old behaviors, I've changed a lot, but I'm really passionate about sharing my journey with you because I know that it helps. Like, I can't relate to a lot of these other people out here who just keep banging on about positivity because I don't think like that. I have really dark thoughts sometimes. Um, you know, I, I, I don't feel like doing stuff. Like today, I spent four hours in bed just, just lying down, chilling, watching YouTube videos, looking at memes. Didn't really feel like doing anything. And that's fine. I, I, that's how I can relate to you. If you're saying you're procrastinating, I do it sometimes too. The difference is I share this stuff so that you can really see where I'm coming from when I talk about slowing down, when I talk about dropping your thinking, when I talk about non-ownership and coming out of that way of behavior, dropping expectations, like owning when you're wrong. Men, especially dudes, like we, we are humbled quite a lot. But humility is not a fun experience. So a lot of us resist it. And I definitely was, man. I'm, I'm about to drop some Doctor Strange spoilers on you right now. So if you haven't seen the movie, first of all, I don't know what the fuck you're doing with your life. You need to watch that movie. Secondly, if you haven't watched it, go away, watch it, and then come back. Um, you know, in, in the Doctor Strange movie, you know, this he's a man of science, right? And then he meets the bold chick who is like, you know, she's the divine feminine. And... He is so resistant to being taught until she shows him. That's what happened with me. Like I met an embodiment of the divine feminine and it humbled me. And then I realized, oh shit, like I really need to learn. And and then in Doctor Strange, the movie, he's like, please teach me. I've, I've been the same way. I've, I'm just looking back at the experiences I had with this person and keep learning more and more about myself from the way she was teaching me not actively she didn't take me on as a student or anything but through the interaction men we need to do this more see that the divine feminine has so much to teach us and yeah it's going to trigger the shit out of your ego it is but it's good for you because the more of that ego you can drop the more of it falls away the more love you can experience with the world then love doesn't always mean sex it doesn't always mean friendship uh, that's a lie actually A lot of friendship is love You know What I'm trying to get at is When you're experiencing love It's It's giving It's like It's so many different ways I can put this But what the way I'm experiencing it right now Is I give indiscriminately From a place of love I give to men I give to women I give to clients I give to my pa- parents I give to my dogs Friends Everyone I give to everyone indiscriminately because my love for myself overflows out of me into the world and this experience I had with this person it showed me the only time when that doesn't happen is when my ego gets in the way and says nope let's put a barrier on that because I'm not getting what I want here and the funny thing is I didn't even know what I wanted I just defaulted back into the the concept of more I I want more I want more and that's not cool that's not how I'm trying to get down right now (laughs) Or ever. So number one, uh, yeah, I I think it's very important for us to acknowledge where we go where we go wrong, you know, where and wrong meaning out of alignment with what you want and with what you want to experience in your life. And also just put yourself in the shoes of the other person. Put yourself in their shoes and say, How would I feel if I was treated like this? And when I did that, that was when I had the biggest realization, like fuck man. Yeah, I I got it completely wrong. And it's because I was just trapped in my ego thinking, oh my God, like, this is not cool. When I put myself in the shoes of the other person, then it really hit me and I had a lot of insights. I had a lot of insights about my own behavior. And look, whether or not I make up with this person or not is out of the, is, is irrelevant. This is not about me and them anymore. It's about me correcting the behavior going forward. And yeah, like, say your apologies, I have, and like, you know, I I will, whatever happens in the future, whatever. But this is very important. I just point the finger back at myself. 
is a real wake up call to be looking at how do you want to be treated. If you ask for something from someone and they're not willing to give it to you, that's cool. But I'm generally okay with giving. Like I know people don't really. Here's another thing: a lot of my friends are beautiful women, and I've noticed they're very resistant to asking for help or asking for anything for that matter. And I noticed another thing is that often, often the most lonely people are beautiful women, because if they don't have to worry about other women talking shit about them or like talking shit to them and being competitive and weird, they have to worry about men constantly trying to take from them. And I don't want to contribute to that loneliness. I would like to be someone, and I have this with a lot of my friends. Like I'm someone they can talk to. If we have sex, nothing will change between us. They'll I'll always be their friend. And if they're seeing someone else, I'll be happy for them. I'll talk to them. Oh yeah, we got a problem with Derek. Yeah, let's talk about that. That's the nature of me. My giving. That's that's my giving nature. But men, you need to understand something. Like. And I say this for me too. I'm not there hundred percent, but we really need to get this. Like being friends with someone, it doesn't always mean what you think it means. It doesn't mean oh I'm unattractive or this and that. You have no idea what's going on for this woman. And I'm really softening a lot of my attitudes around this because I'm dropping the ego around it. It's got really doesn't have anything to do with me. Yes, there's this whole thing about friend zone, and you know we'll talk about that in, in another episode. But really, like, it's yeah, the more relaxed you can be about what happens, the more is available to you. And this is why I have great friendships and relationships. Most generally, most of the time, is because I have that attitude. Genuinely, it's not it's, it's not a tactic to have more sex. I don't I don't give a shit about having more sex. It's really just about slowing down and having an expansive experience of life but if i'm living sped up and really like trying to get a result i'm like narrowing all the opportunities that i could have with sex relationships friendships everything it it just gets narrower and narrower so yes this is a lot of this has been targeted at men but also beautiful women you know you're all beautiful in your own different ways i love that i'm seeing more and more of that as i go through this journey but I see the loneliness and one thing I would encourage you to do is ask people for help people that you trust and set the expectations and say hey look I don't want anything else from you except this thing are you able to help me with that and if you see that the expectations are coming out from men or from women whatever it is you know you can recognize that and you can distance yourself but It broke my heart, man. When when I heard that, you know, the most beautiful women, uh, most of the lonely people are usually beautiful women. It really hurt me, man. I was like, "Fuck, um, I don't want to contribute to that because beauty is not something to be shunned into the corner and left to feel lonely. It's something to be celebrated." And look, this stuff sounds nice and poetic coming from me. It doesn't come from me. I'm le- learning a lot from my mentors, from my coaches, from my clients. I'm learning a lot. And I'm just interpreting it the way that makes sense to me right now. And this thing will evolve, and I'll change through it. But yeah, that's something that I really want to emphasize for the men out here is like we need to take a stand for beauty and let it shine rather than trying to own it and hide it in a corner. And if you let a woman be beautiful in your presence instead of trying to shut it down and own it, then she'll want you more. And I'm not saying this from like a place of oh look at me all these women want me I, I I don't see it like that I just see it as I would want that you know if someone's not trying like I hate it when people try and tell me what to do such and you can do this you can't do that you have to talk to this person you can't talk to that person I'll be like fuck you who are you to tell me what to do and then I don't I don't shine in beauty I start getting pissed off <laughs> so yeah men just put yourself in the shoes of these women well maybe not physically because a lot of women have small feet. <laughs> oh man, that's what I wanted to say today. Um, I'm learning a lot. I'm, and I have this. I have this expression. I use it all the time. I'm only an egg. Okay, what does that mean? I'm still hatching. And my coaches, my mentors, they are like the mother hen, and I'm hiding in there in the little shell. Like I'm, re- I'm trying to break out, and then they're just keeping it warm for me, man. 
I'm I'm gonna hatch in my own time. And this analogy goes very deep. Like it's like Russian nesting dolls, right? You hatch out of one shell, you got another shell, and you just ha- keep hatching. And I'm not talking about having some hard exterior shell where I don't talk about my feelings. I think if you've been here for any amount of time, you know I do that all the time. I talk about how I'm feeling a lot. But this is really just about understanding that I'm in the journey of becoming a different version of myself constantly. Like I have this joke going on with one of my friends. I change every two weeks. Every two weeks when they talk to me, they're like, you're, you're a completely different person. <laughs> and it will continue to be that way because I'm dedicated to my growth. So anyway, it's been a bit of a longer episode. Um, I'd love to know what you think. Men particularly, talk to me. Tell me what tell me what you get from listening to this. Women too, you know, I, I think you're both going to have different, excuse me, different perspectives on this stuff. And I'm very excited for us to see where this go, where this takes us. I don't do the new year thing. I don't really give a shit about what day of the week it is or what day on the calendar. I, I don't I don't live my life by the Gregorian calendar because it doesn't serve me. The only reason I use a calendar is because I need to schedule calls. <laughs> so anyway, um, new year is not a, a, a point in time. It's a mindset. It's a choice. If you want to be new year, new me and all that bullshit, do it today. I don't, I don't know why you I don't know when this episode is going to come out, but it doesn't like this stuff doesn't mean anything. Unless you make it mean something. Anyway, that's enough for me. I'll see you next week. Peace.